So today, I want to take a look at these paper battery company power responder capacitors. These can be charged up to 4 volts each, and each are rated for 360 farads. So I just really like the idea of how thin these are, and how much capacitance they had for like the density of it. So I'm going to get these out of the package and get them on the bench here, and we'll take a look at them. So back now, about a week later, after I got these, and test them, and I've charged them up to 4 volts, and I let them set for about a week. And let's get this meter so you can see the display. They are still holding almost exactly 4 volts. I just put my power supply on 4 volts and let them sit there at 4 volts until the current dropped the next to zero. A week long sitting here at almost the exact same voltage is good. I think now I'm just going to put them in series. So I'm going to solder some of the tabs in a series configuration and uh, solder and insulate. And we'll be right back with a little 12 volt capacitor pack. One thing I didn't notice until I looked at it a little closer on a first investigation, these tabs seem to be pretty substantial. But I believe on the positive lead, we see here that it's a lot thinner. And it's like a little piece of aluminum strip, very thin, pretty much just a thin foil. And it's thick inside, so it must be a fusible link, basically, built in there on the plus side. So I decided before I solder these together, I'm just going to roll over and crimp the plus and minus together. Being careful to separate the other side here. Now I have 8 volts potential. We don't want to touch. So I'm just going to crimp these together as a temporary measure for testing. And that's got that 8 volts. And I'm going to put some insulating material here. Just temporarily. And then I can come with this one. As we see here coming off our minus. We can do another plus here. Wrap this up on this. Let's do it like this. This side. Being very careful here. We'll put these together. And these were called engineering test samples, so they have been um, used or tested before. That's why they've uh, looks like friction welded together there, or tapped, maybe pressed together there. Need to put some tape here as well, just temporarily. I can come back and put some Kapton tape after we get these more permanent. So now we should have ourselves a 12 volt capacitor. So that's a pretty large capacitance in such a small package. I'm going to bring over a 65 watt headlight. See how long it'll power up this high load demand of this halogen bulb. One thing I love about capacitors is they can charge fast. Amazing capacity. I can finally see it getting a lot dimmer. It's still bright. Just we're at five volts and dropping pretty rapidly now. We're down to a light glow. I don't know if you can see that or not. I stopped the test at one volt. And we we're at one volt, so that is very impressive for the size and the weight. It did get warm. Good bit of current going through there. I'm gonna charge it back up now. 12 volts, which is our max. I'm going to go up to 2 amps. 2 amps is already at 9 volts. So this is um just an example of uh, how quick it's going up. So as you can see it building up with a 2 amp limitation there. Charging back up. Going up pretty quick. We're going to let this charge. And we'll be right back. And after just a few minutes of charging, coming back, checking here. We're getting really, really close to our 12 volts. And on my supply, now we are constant voltage supply at 12 volts output. And we're down to 0 0.63 amps, 0 0.62, 0 0.61, 0 0.60. So, so back now I have the pack fully charged at 12.01 volts. When I ordered the pack, I did not realize it had this little fusible link built in. 
so this may not work but one thing I had in mind for such a small pack was to build me a real small or low profile uh, little spot welder and I, I put together this little dinky uh, test set because hopefully the switch is more likely to fail than the actual tab but if the tab does blow off oh well I'm just gonna give it a try because it's one thing I ordered a little pack for I've enjoyed testing and, and uh, fooling with it I did not realize that paper battery company went out of business um, I don't know exactly why but they were a company founded in 2008 and had a really neat um, even some flexible supposedly even some thin wafer uh, flexible like ultra capacitor packs that was hoping to be used in computers and stuff like that this is just a very old uh, snap switch that's got pretty high AC rating but so my thoughts were just taking some small strips and actually seeing if we can put them together with these little replaceable tips and this may or may not go so well Actually did better than I thought it would, but it did pop off. I definitely know that by using these long leads that I was reducing the current sum, which was my definitely my goal in my first test. Definitely still heated up. Knew I kept this little mica sheet for something out of a battery, right? So we're down to 10 volts. So now I have just a slightly different setup. I'm still coming off of my capacitors the same when I hit the button. The difference is I've changed the way I was coming through my switch. So my battery is coming through my common. And this switch just so happened to have a normally closed uh, function to it as well. So it's a um, single pole double throw. So with that setup, it can drop across the capacitor when I push the button here. And when I release the button, it can go across the normally closed and go back out and actually charge the battery up. So right now, if I hit the button, I go to zero current. If I release it, I got, it's almost fully charged. So it's down to the milliamps showing on the display on my charger. So that's just a way to keep this fully charged out there every, every time. Because the results wasn't bad after I did that. That's just my little charging clip there. It don't have to be much current. It's not helping at all with this. Because the supply, the power supply would not be able to do anything uh, as far as this much current anyway. It's just don't normally close to help charge back. And now it's charging at 2 amps when I release it. So I have just used a 6 volt or 12 volt battery to do a quick spot well before. Of course, never a good idea to short out a battery. Um, you know, lithiums definitely don't like it, so I don't use lithiums for it, but wanted to give the um, super capacitors a, a check I tried today, but I was trying to go for a really, really thin uh, setup. I was even hoping to make one that's basically handheld that I could just do and see how it held up. And um, even though mildly successful, it ain't what I would use to build a battery pack or anything. Um, so next up, I think I'll try to get some uh, some larger capacitors. I'll just see how they do as a, um, as a little, uh, portable spot welder. So I think we will need at least twice, if not three times, the capacitance on the 12 volts. So if we had maybe a thousand farad, it actually might be um, pretty close to working for a portable spot welder. So even though this company is out of business, I wanted to get these and actually put my hands on them and see how they work. They do call them a hybrid pack, even though they call them paper battery company and they call them uh, capacitors. They call them kind of a hybrid technology, and we see that the current didn't actually um, drop off quite as quick as a supercapacitor normally would. So back now with it fully charged again. Just another test. I have a Milwaukee M12 little LED lantern. 
shows our charge. We could also charge a, um, a phone or something through the USB because it has that built in. I'm just going to let this run. I'll pause it and come back. We'll see how long it lasted for the full charge on a 360 farad uh, capacitor bank at 12 volts. That was actually quite a good run to be on high. This light actually has more than one mode. It's getting low here, but we actually could have run it all the way down on low. I think I'm going to charge it up. We'll see how long it lasts on the lowest mode. So back now, fully charged once again. We'll hook the lantern up. We'll go to the third setting. And I know that the camera picks up the flicker on this one. I might just turn it down and we'll be back when it cuts off. Over an hour and 39 minutes on a few minutes of charge on the lowest setting. That's pretty impressive. So I have a really good application in mind for these little capacitors. And the reason I ordered enough to do 12 volts is I have a, a small shed out in the woods in the backyard. And um, I have a just a small solar panel hooked up to it. And I've tried several small um, lithium ion, some little lead acid, some NICAD. And it's just problematic because uh, I do have a lot of trees around with a lot of cloudy days. So sometimes the battery just go down too low. So I'm actually going to give this little 12 volt pack that I put together here of these small capacitors. And it shouldn't matter if it pulls it all the way down. It should charge back up. We'll see how the controller does with it hooked up. It might be a good application for it. If you'd like to look into these small um, hybrid capacitors today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.